It's another crafty Thursday evening. You are joining the team from simplymadelocal.com. We are an online handmade, creatively, uniquely custom made marketplace. <laughs> Simplymadelocal.com. All of those things. All those yes. things. Oh my goodness. And then some. <laughs> and then some. That is right, because we are not just a marketplace. We are also a all things crafty blog and you can find us at simplymadelocal.com. I'll introduce you to our team. I'm Abby. I'm Ryan. <laughs> Taylor. I guess. <laughs> I think it's gonna be a giggling night tonight. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. <laughs> also I, I know I'm especially giggly because I'm so happy that I can breathe through my nose again. It's wonderful feeling. <laughs> welcome back. Yes, we are happy yes, to have welcome you back. back. Yes. We are officially <laughs> a quartet this evening, not a triple threat like we were last week. Because <laughs> I'm so happy that I can breathe through my nose again. It's <laughs> well, we are glad that you are feeling better and that you are able to join us this evening, Ryan. For those of you who are just now joining us and you are new to Simply Made Local, we come here to Facebook Live every Thursday evening at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to bring you a fun and an exciting craft night where you can either get yourself a uh, of something fun to eat or drink and just sit down and have an hour of fun crafty conversation and learn some really fun new tips and tricks on some different uh, new crafts. Or you can uh, check our supply list, which goes out every Saturday on our Instagram and Facebook at Simply Made Local. And you can check out that supply list and uh, have everything ready and craft along with us here every Thursday night, which we do have um, some people do that with us. And if you have any questions as you're going along, feel free to reach out and uh, we'd love to hear what you guys are working on. Yeah, so we, we like to know what you guys are working on. We like to know where you guys are from. We like yes. to know all the things. This one I was actually really excited for. You know what? I didn't think I was going to, and I'm being completely honest, didn't think I was going to be all that into it. I mean, I always kind of do this. I, I always give it away, so I'm not going to give it away. But I always kind of do this activity um, every year. But so I just wasn't all that, I don't know, into it. But then I sat down to do, you know, with all my supplies and everything. And I thought, okay, this is going to be really like a lot of fun. So I, especially after seeing what Ryan's got in store for you. Yes. This is one of those um, really fun childhood memories that, you know, we all have. And I'm really excited to be able to bring that into this, you know, place where I'm at in life and, and put some different spins. So I'm yeah. very excited for this evening too, because... Yeah. I feel like as a crafter, um, I've just, I don't know if it was because I've been home more in 2020 that I had more time to just really dive into different techniques, but I'm just, I'm really blossoming in my abilities and what I can do and what I want to do and what I want to try. So that's why I'm excited uh, for this evening. And every time you join us, you are going to find um, that we have a lot of, uh, tips and tricks. And, and most of those tips are coming from uh, what not to do. And I, and I love that because we're real and, you know, not everything goes perfect in the world of crafting as you should know that if you're a crafter yourself. So uh, get comfy because you're going to really enjoy this evening. Uh, we're going to tell you what we're doing here in just a moment. We're just letting everybody uh, join us and, and come on. If you are somebody who thinks that your uh, friends or your followers would enjoy uh, a fun craft night with Simply Made Local, please feel free to share this um, to your page um, or yes. into any groups that you think would really enjoy um, a craft night. We're all about it. Please, please share. <laughs> if you're a crafter yourself, please tell us what you love to make. If you're a small business owner, please uh, tell us what you sell and feel free to put a link to your shop or your Instagram or your Facebook down in the comments so that we can all support you. Yes. Also, how does this always happen? I'm always, whenever I decide to wear my apron, I'm always the only one. <laughs> I'm the only one. Hey, I um, wore mine yeah. while I watched you guys last week as I'm Aww. sniffling. She's <laughs> on the couch sniffling in an apron. I love that. That's super endearing. 
Yeah, because then I could just stuff my tissues in the pocket. The pockets are nice. <laughs> Handy. Every good crafter has to have pockets. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we always say here at Simply Made Local, you have to have a good apron and a good glue gun and a good pair of scissors. It, that really does make a difference. If you got those three things, oh you're going to go, honey. Yeah. The scissors and are also really, really helpful. Lots of scissors. I find that because I have a family, and I'm sure it happens to everybody, but if I don't have multiple scissors, eventually the one good pair I have will disappear. Oh and um, no matter if I threaten them with their lives to not touch my fabric scissors, that they'll still do it. So they do. My Lots family of, knows. I have yes. to go find mine not today. Touch crafting they're scissors. Not where they're supposed to be. Yeah. The only one they don't ever feel is my pinking shears, which huh. I think these are like the funnest scissors ever. Yeah. They are. Nobody ever steals my small, like the small um, felting ones oh, that I have, the Fiskars yeah. ones. Yeah, the one that we were just talking about. Nobody ever yeah. steals those. They're so tiny, but you know what? Don't underestimate those scissors. They're very sharp, very strong. Nope. Tiny, but mighty. Oh, what? for sure. I'm curious, um, everybody who's on with us right now, what is that uh, two die for tool that you could not, you couldn't live without? Please share with us. What is something uh, mm -hmm. in your craft room that you could never live without? I think um, that is such, always a, such a fun topic because you never know until you know it. Like I never knew a quality glue gun was like essential. I always used the, um, the, the cheap ones. ones from Michaels. They're about $4, I think. Um, you'd find them you on the get them at dollar store. Don't do it. No. <laughs> and, and I would, it would burn out, you know, in a couple months and I would just go get a, a fresh new one. And yeah. I was excited to get a, a new one every time um, because right away they, they just weren't ever working, you know. Uh, perfect. But um, that was until I found my sure bonder. And, uh, you know, all of these girls um, can agree with me that it does make a difference. And it's not expensive. So I don't even know why no, I was not, buying not the super cheap ones. Mine has been in use probably daily for over a year. And it still <laughs> looks, I can't grab it from this chair, but it still looks <laughs> brand new, still feels brand new. Um, and it's just amazing. Well, and I like the Sure Bonder because there's so many different things that you can buy for it. So there's different types of glue sticks that will go with it. There's different types of um, attachments to the to the um, tips. If you want to do things that are a little more intricate or something that's a little bit more like on a larger scale. So I feel like those little things make the biggest difference when it comes to whatever wireless. project you're trying to do. Oh yeah, wireless. wireless. Hello, that's a game yeah. changer. Yeah. Thank yes. you, Miss yeah. Who works with Sherbonder, who created the most beautiful uh, glue gun. Yep, oh, right there. Beautiful, it is gorgeous. lightweight, wireless. I mean, you just you can't get any any better than that, ladies. So you know what else is um, another tool that I really like is this one. And we got it, I got it last year at the um, Pinterest convention. It's called a pen blade, and I got two different sizes. And yes. I I've always used these cheapy dollar store, I mean, Zacto things, but I'm telling you the precision, I use this thing nearly every day, almost as much as my glue gun. And I have this one as a pointy tip and another one that's a little more rounded. A good who Zacto sold, knife is also very Who cheap. sold that? The, the people were lovely. They were fantastic people. I can't remember. Yeah, they were, but we did that crap at their table too. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I don't remember who it was. Yeah, yeah, I remember they, had that the, too. they had that glow the light um yeah the light up under display. table so you could do like weeding yes. and drawing yeah but I, I don't, don't remember what their names were I don't know I just know this is called a pen blade and they had lots of other different sizes and it was very inexpensive I think it was only like five dollars and it oh, like yeah. Yeah. yeah awesome we'll yeah, try and figure that favorite. out and we'll try and We'll try and put it in the comments if we can figure out yeah. what the name is after this. Yes, I would I would love that. So yes, if you have a, a must-have tool, please share that with us. We'd love to know the brand or just maybe there's uh, something that could make our lives completely easier and we have no idea. So anyways, we are all ready. Uh, we've got everybody who's joined us. We haven't announced yet. We're just about there. So Ryan, would you like to tell everybody what we are doing this evening? 
We're decorating Easter eggs, but we're not doing any of them. This is like grown up Easter eggs, I feel like. Um, yeah. We're, we're all doing something different as usual. Um, I'm doing like four different things. I think we're each doing like drastically different things. Um, so um, supplies you need for, for my projects are these, I got these crafting, they're plastic and they have a slight uh, texture to them. Almost terracotta. It's not as smooth as plastic, but I got them at the 99 cent store for a dozen for a dollar. Fantastic deal. Um, and I'm using alcohol inks, um, puff paint, gold leaf, um, some copper leafing, and glitter and Mod Podge to do my different kinds of decorating. I love it. I Taylor, Taylor's just using Sharpie and has some amazing designs. Carrie, you're painting yours, right? Yeah. <laughs> I had to get started because I need like a thousand coats apparently. So, yes. And then all, all I heard about Abby's was that she was doing four different styles too. And one of them was going to be like a terracotta method that she's going to transform the plastic egg into like a terracotta field. Um, so, I'll let her explain about that. But what were the other ones that you were doing, Abby? So, yes, um, I, I want to kind of bring. Uh, a little bit more of that natural feel. And I know that Ryan was just kind of touching on that. So one of the things that I always love to just mention um, in these videos is you, if you're new to joining Simply Made Local, um, uh, our craft nights on Thursday, you might notice that there are four squares and no, we are not playing um, a game for money, but on, like on the TV, <laughs> what is that called squares? <laughs> what was that game show called? Cause I was trying to think squares? about it last week too. It didn't have like Whoopi Goldberg, with yes. squares? Um, we, we're going to play a game like that. Hollywood squares. Hollywood, Hollywood squares. Yes. squares. Yes. So this okay. is the Hollywood <laughs> squares. This is not the Brady Bunch. This is <laughs> <it's laughs> <a Hollywood. laughs> com. And uh, we're just four very different crafters and we have four very different backgrounds. So we like to come on here. We like to have fun and uh, show you four completely different ways to make the same craft. So you're gonna get just four different styles um, and you're gonna get four different tutorials basically in one video. So that's why this is really kind of cool. You can uh, just watch one video um, or hone in on one square during the video and then rewind, watch another one um, or watch them all generally just to get a general sense and some tips and tricks. So we're so glad that you've chosen to join us this evening. We are doing alternative ways to decorate Easter eggs. So it's not just your dying and these aren't regular uh, real eggs. So these are no, something that these are last superior. Last yes. And the really cool thing is that we um, tried to stick to different um of eggs. So we wanted to show you that you can, you have different options and different price points. So mine came from the Dollar Tree and I think, yeah, uh, all of my stuff is like a dollar. I didn't spend more than a dollar on mine. And, um, and then, you know, we've got um, some that were bought from some big box stores, but they still, the eggs were a dollar. I don't think anybody spent over that. Um, I know that there's different options out there with higher qualities, feel free, uh, depending on what you're willing to pay. But we just wanted to give you um, those different options. So well, I am... Say that even, I went today because I bought my gold leaf and it was only $5 and I had a 30% off coupon. So it was only like four... 50 or something um if or less you know with tax and stuff but they had a pack of these same for five dollars 5.99 i think and they looked exactly the same so yeah i got mine at walmart and they're the exact same as yours but they were a buck yeah. something i think like a buck 50 or maybe a buck i don't know less than that um and they are like a plastic, I guess. I was kind of playing with them. They are plastic and they have like a really, I don't love the texture on the outside because um, I'm just not that person that likes that porcelain-y texture. I don't love it, but I do like the, I, <laughs> but I do like the matte look once it's done. I like that matte feel or matte look to them. So just depends on what you're in, like what you're going for. Are you going for something that's a little more shiny or something a little more matte? And you wanted them to be shiny or you wanted a shiny finish you could always clear coat them at the end which is with the ones that i'm doing um the gold leaf on i think i might do that just to protect them for after packaging so. yeah. yeah 
Absolutely. So back to what I am making, I am doing, I wanted to create um, almost like a, a clay looking egg. So I wanted it to have like a terracotta um, feel and look. So I'm going to be painting just regular Easter eggs. As you can see here, where's my camera? Oh, there it is. Um, that I pre mod podge. So you are going to need some mod podge. I glued them shut by gluing the rim. And then I actually, for my terracotta eggs, I um, brushed them with the Mod Podge just so that I could get some, a little bit more texture to it. And also um, just so the paint would adhere a little easier than on the, the plastic. So I am gonna be Have doing you, that. Have you done a pre one already? Like is the paint stick better when you Mod Podge it? It did, it did. So as you can see here, this is the terracotta egg. So it has that oh, beautiful. beautiful um, you know, this, this paint, um, is folk art paint and it's in Pueblo. And then I mixed that with some apple barrel and the classic caramel. And it really brought that perfect terracotta color. So, and as you can see, it's matte and it's got a really nice texture. So, um, you could so always add the, um, baking powder to it. I believe it's either baking powder yes, or baking I'm soda. I'm so sorry. Yeah, baking the ingredient soda. there is, yes, I did mix a little baking soda oh. in with the paint. And I didn't go overboard because the more you put in, the more grainy it's going to be. So you want this beautiful mixture of still creamy, but chalky uh, finish. And so that's yeah. um, what I got. And I'm really, really happy with that. And I really had to go back and forth, back and forth mixing the colors so um just start off with a little bit of each and then start adding more to your preference of the terracotta look um like so that, that that's what i have and then i i took just a piece of cardboard you're going to need a piece of cardboard and i'm going to be stamping a design onto the egg as well so i also have some white paint and that is pretty much it for the terracotta egg now i did want to do a moss a uh, covered Easter egg, but I'm not sure that I'll have time this evening. So if I don't get to that one, I will do a quick video and I'll put that either included in our YouTube um, video, which you can find that on our YouTube channel at Simply Made Local or on our TikTok uh, at Simply Made Local as well. You'll find some shorter tutorials that we have available there. So I will do that. But the other one that I am going to do is I'm going to cover um, another egg. I'm gonna do paper mache with some musical notes. So I have some musical um, here and I have cut them up into some strips. And um, I made a little bit of paper mache glue uh, using the Mod Podge and some water. And then I'm just gonna uh, wrap that up. And then I think that will look um, really pretty. Some sort of like um, that farmhouse look. It's that black and white feel. I so love, I love, love using music paper, old music note paper for projects like this. My, me and my mom and my daughter do that all the time. Yeah, so really we fun. used it. We used it one year for Christmas. Oh, I remember we wrapped. Yeah, and it was beautiful. I saw it was that fun. When I put Yes, um, some alternatives to different ways to wrap gifts. We used uh, the musical note and it really does look beautiful with some twine and some holly berry on that. Just the colors really pop on that black and white and that vintage feel. It was really pretty. Um, and I did want to bring out, uh, we, I'm going to just pull it here. It's right out of my reach. We also have um, some more ideas along with decorating some alternative ideas for Easter. And that is on our blog. And we uh, put those out last year. So you can head over to the simplymadelocal.com um, blog. And um, as, I'm sorry, that's at simplymadelocal.com slash blog. And you'll find some more alternative ways, especially ways to get crafty with the kids. But I wanted to share, this is what we did um, last year. How adorable is that? So we made our eggs. I forgot about those. I know. so cute. So um, we've got the how-to step-by-step on how to create one of these guys, which is just so beautiful. And once again, very budget-friendly um, little girls love these. You can set these out for decor or they can find these guys um, on Easter morning. So really fun. And, and that's, uh, that's all I got. That's me.
Taylor. <laughs> so I don't know if anyone's going to be able to follow along with this supply list, but <laughs> try us. <laughs> <laughs> I am using the same eggs that Ryan has. I did get mine at Walmart though. Um, I don't really think they literally look exactly the same. Um, so don't think there's much of a difference. Um, and I am taking a Sharpie and I'm going to be doing black and white um, eggs. Surprise, surprise, black and white, you guys. <laughs> um, I do also have a bronze and a gold. Um, Sharpie as well. So I might be doing something with these. I'm not sure, but I think I'm pretty much just going to stick to the whole black and white theme. So the very first one I did want to test were these little eyelashes. They're so cute. Um, so that's kind of just what I'm doing. Like I said, really crazy list here. I did see them listed. I was kind of looking for some inspiration and people call these last minute eggs. <laughs> so if you need to do some sort of decorating of eggs or if you're just looking for some like last minute Easter decor for whatever reason you can do some of these last minute eggs literally this cost me a buck I had my sharpies already so um really easy and I think it's going to be really beautiful once it's all in the display that I have it in or that I want to put it in um because the black and white's really kind of you know my thing so but that's it I think I only spent about a dollar too. It was just the eggs. I had everything else. So this was yeah. definitely um, budget friendly for me this week. I didn't even have yeah, to buy a whole have... pack of organic eggs. <laughs> okay, Carrie, Sorry, Carrie you know? <laughs> I'm just changing. Um, I am <laughs> going to make a couple little bunnies and a couple little carrots. So mostly paint and this is taking a little while I have um these like styrofoam eggs that I actually used last week for the garland so I had some left over I figured I'd just go ahead and paint the ones that I had left over um that kind of a shiny exterior though so this paint isn't kind of coating as well as I want it to but multiple layers of paint and then um oh no they're all falling um, once I get them painted, which is going to take a while apparently because this one just smushed everywhere. Um, I'm also going to be using some felt to make ears and uh, different parts of the animals and the tops for the carrots. So cute. It might take me a minute to get these painted though because this paint does not dry as fast as I want um, it to. If this is your first time joining us, um, then you may not know, but those of you who do join us every week, sometimes we don't get our crafts done at the end of the hour. Um, so if, if you want to see those finished projects, we will post those to our social media on Thursdays. Uh, so today we posted last week. I'm behind because I was sick, so, but those will all be up this week. Uh, yes, and um, so you will see uh, the finished projects um on Thursdays and if you look today we put up our Easter garland so last week we made some really beautiful that was a really fun project because we used all different materials so there was kind of something for everybody on there um, yeah, but you, can, you can check that out uh that's up uh today those garlands turned out really pretty and once again every budget um, and we shopped at all different stores, so you kind of have uh, a lot of options, a lot of options. And I think we covered, we covered like every aspect of Easter on that one. We did one, one did bunnies, one did carrots, one did eggs, and then um, I went uh, Lent, you know, uh, you know, going more religious and observing the Lent season. So that uh, was a lot of fun for me. Okay. So I completely uh, painted the egg in the terracotta color. So I have one here that is completely done and dry. So I'm gonna start with that one. And to make my stamp, I wanted to make it myself. So I'm not really sure if this is going to work out. So you're gonna follow along with me on this adventure. So I took some construction paper and I cut out just a strip. And we're talking half an inch. 
yeah, about half an inch. Maybe three fourths. Doesn't have to be perfect. Um, so just cut out that strip and then I kind of just accordioned it. And then I taped the ends. So you're just going to kind of create a shape that you like and I went back and forth so that I had three hoops and then I cut this off, applied some tape, put a little double-sided tape in between and that's my stamp there. So I already have cool. one of those ready to go. As you can see here, I kind of squished it a little and now I'm just going to dip this into some white paint and then just kind of make a pattern with it. I'm gonna get out some white. And I want this to be uh, chalky as well and have that matte finish, which I think, oh, it is already matte. So I have some Apple Barrel White in matte, which is super cool because this is a huge bottle. Um, so I don't even have to mix. So let's see. Now, at first, I kind of wanted to just make them go everywhere, but I'm wondering, should I make them in a uniform pattern or should I just kind of stamp it anywhere, everywhere? I like mm. anywhere, everywhere. Is that what you vote, Taylor? That's okay, what I so vote. I'm going to start with one. Let's see. So, oh, I'll put this down. Let's see how this turns out. I'm going to stamp that real lightly so I don't get, uh... let's see here. You know what would be fun on these eggs too, since they're so like just plain is like a black vinyl from the Cricut. That'd be fun too. Oh yeah, I saw some that were like reverse dyed. So they put the, just any color down and then they actually dyed it and then they peeled off the letters afterward. So the letters were still white underneath. And they're really fun. Cool. They had all kinds of funny Easter sayings, some of them. And then I saw some that were similar with more religious um, sayings, which I thought was cool. Okay. So, yeah. so that, I have to be very light with it. So I'm going to try it again. I did get um, a little bit of it being kind of filled in. So I'm going to try again. And hopefully this time not have, um, I've kind of spaced it out a little bit more so I don't get any fill in. So let's see if I go up here. Oh, that's fun. Okay. So a little bit kind of came off. So I'm just going to go put that right back. That turned out pretty. Oh, look at that. Oh, very cute. So now... So now I'm just gonna kind of, yeah, put them everywhere. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting out some felt pieces while my paint dries so I can make another coat. Hi, Kristen. Kristen just joined us. Uh, if you uh, if you are just joining her and us, uh, we are uh, bringing you different alternatives ideas for decorating Easter eggs tonight. So we're having a lot of fun doing some different things. Um, we're making some terracotta eggs. We're making paper mache eggs. We've got uh, some gold um, embellishments up there with Ryan and some sparkles. We've got some really neat um, hand uh, marker, Sharpie techniques going on with Taylor. <laughs> Um, and then Carrie is uh, sharing with us her talents with felt and painting. So we've kind of got all of the uh, all of the areas covered. So if you're trying to figure out what I'm doing right now, I am stamping a terracotta egg with a, a handmade homemade stamp that I just made, trying to make it. Uh, come out with some really cool designs, which, which, which I'm really liking. So it's just kind of giving me these different stamps each time. Now, I'm also going to try out doing some freestyle, uh, like Taylor's kind of doing. So I do have a paint marker here, and I'm going to try doing just some simple, uh, maybe geometric patterns or 
or maybe just some simple lines as well. So I, I kind of want to switch it up and do different different things. That's looking. So um, for mine, I um, I didn't want to go buy some more watercolors, and I already have these alcohol inks that we've used a bunch of times for the present. So I have this really cool um, watercolor pen, and so I just put the alcohol inks in these little dishes and filled my watercolor pen with plain water, and I'm just watercoloring on some color. And then while the egg is still wet from the watercolor. I'm just laying some gold leaf that I also had left over from one of our resin crafts and it just sticks and then later on I'll um, spray it with a clear coat to seal it. That's how I got this band play. I love it. Very cool. Um, I will say that drawing on these eggs is a little bit on the difficult side because of the fact that um, they have like a powder on them. So oh, really? kind of, they're like powdery almost like, um, very, very dry. So when you go to try to write on them with the Sharpie, it kind of makes it a little bit difficult. You really have to kind of like, it kind of dries out your marker a little bit. Oh, oh, okay. So maybe then I will just try a regular paintbrush. So I'm going to try that. So let me... I might, I, I might recommend like a actual paint marker. But you know what? I think I have one. Oh, okay. Well, I'm hopeful. So I can um, check both of those scenarios. So I'm going to try one more and I'm just going to do some really simple lines. Um, I'm not quite done with the stamped egg. Just uh, I'm letting um, one side dry and then so that I can lay the egg down. I don't have an egg holder. Uh, so I'm almost done with that, but I will, I will come back. I will come back to that. Oh, look at all those hearts and likes. Thanks, guys. <laughs> We're so happy that you guys are enjoying yourselves. Um, this is just something that we love to do every week. We would be doing this on or off alive. So we thought, why don't we come on and um, just have a little fun and, and do that with you guys and share some techniques and, and all that fun stuff. So lots of fun. You can't find my paint marker, but I can find this this one, which is a fabric marker from the dollar store, which works just as good. So yeah, let's just start drying. I need to uh, let this keep drying. It's it's still drying. So I'm going to move on to my paper mache eggs while uh, this finishes drying, and then I'll be able to end with just doing um, this simpler, uh, really neat. Um, easy design on this guy, <laughs> which I think I might like a little bit more than the stamp. So I do like the stamp and it looks, it looks really pretty. Um, it's just very bold. And I was just kind of looking for a minimalistic, simple eggs. So I might enjoy the simple lines a little better. Okay. So if you missed us in the beginning, uh, to get, um, these plastic eggs, I already applied some Mod Podge uh, inside the egg as well as on the outside along the crack just to seal it. And um, so as you can, you can kind of see that matte edge there. So that's good to go. So now I'm gonna mix together um, a bowl with some glue and some water for my uh, mache sauce. <laughs> and I already cut up some music sheets into strips. And then I, I love paper mache. You just, there's no rhyme or reason. You just apply and keep applying, keep applying. And yeah, keep I'm doing a lot of paper mache on my same time. I'm doing tissue paper. Oh, nice. And one punch. I did see the tissue paper and I love the way that that looks like um, alcohol dye. Yeah. I love the way that looks. So show us how that gold turned out, Ryan. I didn't see it. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. Hold on. Let me put this one down just so at a drying point. So I've done two of the watercolor and gold. So. Oh, very pretty. Love, love, love that. Love that. Yeah, it turned out gorgeous. Here's half my glitter. Just it's just Mod Podge with glitter dumped on it because you know I can't have a holiday without glitter. And <laughs> this is my um, puff paint confetti one so far for sprinkles. I mean. Oh yeah. my gosh! Super cute. Yeah. And that. Then Copper leaf one that I just have spots to fill. Wow, I love the watercolor with the with the gold. Yeah, it turned out awesome. So beautiful. Okay, so I have my mixture here: blue and water. Dip your paint strip or your paint your uh, your music strip <laughs> into the paint, and then you're just gonna apply. Super simple. You all did it in kindergarten. Don't put any extra thought into it. Just do. <laughs> and I yeah. probably will go over this in the end with the Mod Podge to um, seal it. I had terracotta on my fingers and now I have terracotta on the paper mache. So I'm gonna get that off. Actually, I'll probably grab um, some gloves. Gosh, I was unprepared today. I have everything around me, but nothing reachable. <laughs> okay, I'm back. All right, this is my little cactus one. So I have little eyelashes and little cactuses so far. Um, I will say that the furniture markers have worked so much better than the Sharpie did. Oh, nice. Surprisingly. That's weird. I really, really love those furniture markers. I use them for a lot of crafts. Yeah, they're just, it's so much, um, like, it's not getting all gooped up with the powder stuff from the eggs. It's weird. So, I'll take it. Okay, I think I have ears. Now that I have some gloves on, I'm just going to put down a bunch of the Mod Podge first and then apply some of the watered paper strip down. It's just gonna be fun and super gluey here. How are yours going, Carrie? Pretty good. I'm just like super concentrating on the spell here. I'm trying to get ears, but I don't think they're coming out quite the same size. Close. <laughs> I'm just freehanding all this felt, so it takes me a minute. I still think that's the best way to do it. I do too. I could cut out all that on my Cricut in two seconds, but it just, okay. for whatever reason, I find it so much more, I don't know, appealing when I can do it by hand. It's satisfying. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. It makes it, I just love it. It's like one of my favorite things to do is the, the felt. And I'm so glad I have a felt friend. Me too. I like, I need to get some more. I'm running out of certain colors. I need to like. You know, um, the best place personally that I think if you want to just get the sheets, there's a couple places online that actually have like the real wool um, right. felt, which is fantastic, but they come in like really long pieces. Yeah. Um, but if you want to get like easy, just sheets of felt um hobby lobby has their certain days where not only is it only like 30 cents or whatever a sheet but sometimes they have their half off days so you right. can get so much felt for such a good price and it's decent quality like it's not super right. yeah. like well they have the it's different better thicknesses than, but it's better than yeah. like michael's kind for sure oh for sure yeah no hobby lobby's felt is the best i have to do that because we definitely Need a little refill here soon. Okay, can I just be somebody who brings this topic up? What is with Hobby Lobby getting rid of their coupon? I know, I am I sad know. about that. Like, come on. I'm really bummed <laughs> about that. <laughs> I know, especially right now when it's like the pandemic. <laughs> that was like the I one know. constant I could always depend on. Yeah. And even, even Michael's, you know, they stopped um, taking uh, competitor coupons. So I guess it is a new, whole new 
generation. Yeah. I think um, Joanne's will still take everybody's coupons. Good. Good on Joanne's. I was just going to say, you know what? Joanne is a smart businesswoman. That's yeah, all I'm going to say. Yeah, she is. <laughs> So as you can see here, it's coming out really nicely and then that's gonna dry really pretty and it's gonna look really nice in a, in a bed of grass. Oh, in a bed of grass. In a bed of grass. Everybody hold up their eggs for a second, whatever one you're working on. Stop where you're at, put it to the camera. They're just painted. <laughs> I know this one's so much prettier, that one. <laughs> Okay. You know, I do every single year we do eggs at the house and I love it, but there's something so satisfying about this. However, there's nothing quite like dipping your fingers in vinegar and dye. Yeah. <laughs> and then smelling it the whole next day. <laughs> I I really love that this year my son will be old enough to really grasp that um, idea of Easter and he did enjoy finding the Easter eggs last year but um, I'm feeling this year is just going to be a whole different uh, level of excitement. Oh heck yeah. So I, I'm excited to dye eggs um, with him this year and I saw actually on um, in our marketplace um, at, at, at simplymadelocal.com which is an Etsy alternative for anybody who's watching who makes handmade products. Uh, you're gonna find um, some really amazing products from US makers um, all across the country. And we have a maker who is actually local to us right here uh, in Southern California. And she makes some really neat sensory play kits for children yeah, and I, I just really cool. love and respect her as a uh, business woman because that's that's a need that's out there and I really appreciate um, those types of products so I will have to say she's very creative and you're going to get um, a lot of different options when shopping her store. Uh, but she just came out and listed a new product, I think today, and that was on a DIY uh, decorating kit for kids um, to decorate eggs. And they're the uh, not real eggs. So yeah. you're going to be able to have them up um, the whole season, which is really neat. But I know that she has really quality products. And so if you're looking for that, you can shop Discovery um play uh, on our uh in our marketplace yeah she her stuff is really really cool um i know my nephew would love some of her stuff so i've been meaning to get on there and order some of her play kits because it's literally perfect it's like one of those things that you can give them and it'll just keep them busy forever and it's just in yeah. this little kit it's just the coolest thing yeah, and it's not candy, and it's, you know, it's functional, and it's it's uh, um, stimulating their little brains, and what I found is really good is um, for travel, when you're, if you're traveling oh, along the yeah. in a car, um, or you're just going, you know, on a vacation, taking these kits are just, um, they're super helpful, really neat. I bet, yeah, that is cool. And it, it gets them off the screens for a little bit. Oh yeah, I yeah, they're little brains in the screens. I just yeah, they don't need that. <laughs> I know I come home from work and I'm exhausted from staring at the screen. I can't imagine how their little brains are. <laughs> so I did um, this egg in some really small strips. I I think I might try the next egg in this um, technique, but with some bigger strips. I was really worried about the bigger strips and how they would go around a rounded surface. That's always um, not easy to do when you're doing paper mache is to do, you know, something round. Um, and I know this because I'm huge for doing paper mache, uh, incorporating it into my Halloween decor. And what what's round at Halloween? Pumpkins. And I love to cover pumpkins. So Oh, I thought easy. you were going to say yourself because I, that's what I thought when I thought of that because Anytime you're trying to make the costume. <laughs> oh my gosh, covering myself in paper mache. 
I could go as uh, a leftover. I'm like, I'm like, you know what? That is the time of the year that I start to get rounder because that's the time of the year that the candy comes out. <laughs> no pumpkins. I love to put um, paper mache on, over a pumpkin to create some extra spooky, scary facial features. And then you can actually um, use uh, paper towels and, and separate them. And you can find that we did that technique um, we did for our spell books this last year. So it, it gives a sense of uh, skin, which is like really cool. So what you can do is you can cover your pumpkin uh, with the skin and, uh, and then mold it to having extra facial features. You can include clay and then really paint over that to make it um, look very scary. Very scary. Yeah. Love Halloween. Spooky. We get extra spooky around here. Spooky Halloween. But right now so it's fun. Easter, so this is fun. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm not someone who does, um, I used to, but not too much anymore. I used to really go out of my way to do the holiday decorating. And I, I don't so much anymore. So I like that I can, uh, but I have decorations up for, you know, my, my decor. And um, this year I'm just kind of adding different elements that subtly uh, say Easter, but it's not um, necessarily a bunny is what I'm trying to say. So I, I really liked doing our garland um, because it just gives that hint of the colors of Easter, but it still just looks like it's uh, my normal everyday decor. So last week's garlands were, I really enjoyed doing that. Okay. Yeah, that was fun. I love the way that yours turned out, Taylor, with the carrots. That was just super cool. Yes, that was um, definitely fun. And I did actually have them hanging up. Did you get those carrots pre-made? Yes. So I actually bought those at uh, Michael's. No, not okay. Michael's. I'm sorry. Dollar store. Oh, I got okay. them at the I have a pack dollar too. store. Um, and I got them a few months ago. And I was surprised, obviously, because, you know, I wasn't thinking that we were going to need to, you know, pre-plan. But I, I realized now that that's something that we have to do is pre-plan any sort of project, especially if it's holiday themed, because their stuff sells out so quickly and they put it out so quickly. Oh, yeah. So. Three months is when they put out, I feel like, the good stuff. Yeah. I went to my Dollar Tree the other day and, and they still had St. Patrick's stuff up. They still have Easter stuff, but I feel like the good stuff came out first and oh, that was a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. The stuff yeah. they had left over was stuff that you're going to grab last minute, like to go to a party so you don't get pinched or something. Not, yeah. not the good crafting stuff. Yeah. I yeah. Agree. Those, and those little wood um, cutouts are always like, I feel like first to go. First to go, yes. So you can actually buy them in bulk sometimes on the website. I know a lot of people don't um, know that. So yeah. if you're looking to do, you know, if you're a business owner and you're wanting to make things to sell, you always have that option um, of buying online, but you, but you have to buy it in bulk, like in sets of 25 to 50. This egg was just super fun to make you guys. Oh, that's cute. Oh, that's like beautiful. It. Wow. Love that. These, okay, so I'm going to um, let this dry. And as it dries, I'm going to mold it. Because like I said, it's it's really hard to get paper mache to really, you know, go seamlessly around a round object. So as it starts to dry, I'm going to um, kind of mold it down and then keep probably applying more and more of the Mod Podge, but I like the way it turned out. It's very cute. Very cute. I love that. Okay, so that one's done. So now I can go back to the terracotta and I'm going to do the last, um, just some simple 
simple lines on that one. And then we're, we're about to be done. So tonight was a lot of fun. If you are needing um, some extra inspiration, we've got tons of ideas on our Pinterest boards. Go on over to pinterest.com and search for um, Simply Made Local. You'll find over 100 boards. We've taken all of the hard work out of finding the best crafts and the best techniques for you. You can just take a look at our boards and we're going to have everything there for every holiday, for almost every um, idea and for every craft you can think of. We have um, examples for you that you can get started on. And then, you know, with Pinterest, you just go down rabbit holes. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect for Easter. Find that rabbit hole. <laughs> so um, I'm going to now just apply some, some white paint to this and this is kind of what this whole thing um, was about this evening is just kind of doing your own style and just really DIYing some, some eggs. So I'm just gonna start right here in the middle and then just do some simple, simple lines. Happy lines as Bob Ross would say. Just yes. Just a, happy, just a happy little line. <laughs> Don't be serious. Don't take yourself serious. This is supposed to be fun. So funny. Love you, Bob. <laughs> too funny I just got my daughter a Bob Ross poster she loves him and we we're about to hang it up in her room cute. sitting favorite. right over there on the couch oh we um even have a new Bob Ross what is it birthday card or invitations oh yeah, yeah it's a birthday yeah a birthday card so for that Bob Ross lover in your life We've got a really cool vendor at simplymadelocal.com who makes handmade um, cards. And oh my gosh, the best cards came out for Valentine's Day. So if you want to be extra prepared for next year, you will be the winner on Valentine's Day if you purchase one of these cards. I, mean, I bought two of those cards this year and they were phenomenal. Mm -hmm. They were big hits because my yeah. best friend and my sister's birthday happened to fall right around um, Valentine's Day. And so I actually ended up buying her um, Valentine's Day cards, but giving them as birthday cards. And my mm -hmm. family loved them. So that, that's really funny. funny. My best friend. And um, she just, she's just very creative. So she took that and um, she also has uh, invitations, uh, different season cards and I think I saw some mugs on there oh the mugs are mugs, great shirt sweatshirt so not only can you get the birthday card but you can get the gift uh from nervous breakdown cards yeah she's awesome yeah her stuff is cute all right oh, so many layers of paint <laughs> how's it going Carrie Oh, it's just that these things are hard to paint, but they're getting there. Uh -huh. The brown like one it. is going on Whoa. really easy, but I think my other paint colors are just like a little lighter, so they take a longer time to get going. But I have cute little bunny ears made and carrot tops ready to go. Yay! Once I can't wait to see them. it. I know, I'm what excited to see yours. You know, when you just and put their little faces together. You just keep trucking away. Uh, yeah. Is there anything that uh, anybody needs to know in order to finish the um, project, Carrie? Um, paint markers for the face, for the little bunnies, and for... Um, the like kind of lines on the carrot, I'm gonna be using either white or off white to make little kind of, you know, the little imperfections on carrots there. Uh, I think that's it. Glue gun for the felt, that's about it. And what are you exactly felting? Just uh, ears and then kind of embellishment? Yeah, and then I actually, I am going to try to attempt, and I don't know how successful I will be at this, so we will see if this is in the final product or not, but I'm going to try to make little flower crowns. Oh, cute! The bunnies heads. So if I, if I get this down right, then they'll be on there, and if not, you'll see just little ears. <laughs> okay. Love it. Goes, but I'm trying. 
love the honesty. Okay, Taylor, is there anything else um, that anybody needs to know in order to finish your craft? Nope, I just think that you need to just have fun with it, do whichever little patterns your heart desires, and make sure that you get a pen that has a good amount of ink in there um, so that you're not um, struggling because these eggs are really drying. And these are the right. eggs from Walmart. Yes, but I believe they're the same eggs that Ryan has. From the Dollar Tree, got it. Yes. Okay. So for mine, like I said, this is really the end of mine. I, I'm just gonna keep doing different patterns, just kind of like Taylor's doing. I'm gonna keep uh, coloring the rest of my eggs in this terracotta uh, color that I think turned out really, really nice. Very, very happy with it. Um, and that uh, was using that Pueblo and the caramel, the classic caramel mixed together with the baking soda. And so that gave it that uh, terracotta clay feel. feel. And so um, this is my just simple lined one. And I think I'm liking that one a lot more than my stamped one. Uh, so I'll probably make a couple of these and then I will set these in a really pretty um, bowl, like a, a woven, woven, weaven weaved <laughs> bowl <laughs> and um, I will, uh, set those out. Carrie, <laughs> edit me. Prove me in real time. Does that exist? Uh, and then for my, for my stamp, that one did turn out really neat. Um, so that's what that's going to look like. And, and you can really create that to be in any shape that you want, big or small, if you want the exact same pattern throughout. So I am happy with that technique, but I think I like the simpler one more. And then, um, like I said, with the paper mache, as it's drying right now, I'm going to keep molding it. I may or may not put an extra layer over at the end because I may want to keep it just this matte finish. Um, but you do have that option of applying another layer of the Mod Podge to keep that sealed. And I'm also going to try using bigger sheets. Um, I'm just not quite sure how that's going to work with the texture. You're probably going to get a lot of a ripples in that. So that's that's that one. And then I didn't finish the moss. So hopefully I'll be able to get that done here shortly. And you'll be able to see that um, on something on either TikTok or <laughs> YouTube or who knows, maybe even Instagram. So that's me. Ryan, any uh, last tips, tricks? Um, be patient with the gold leaf if you use that, if you're covering a whole egg, because that is very time consuming. Um, so is the puff paint, because it takes a long time to dry for each side. Um, I so far love the watercolor and the gold leaf the best. Well, and the, of course, my favorite glitter. These little glitter uh, polka dot ones are super cute. Uh, yes. Yeah. Love it. Okay. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us this evening. Why don't we just show up one? Ryan, will you hold yes, up your you. um, hold up your favorite yeah. one? Taylor, hold up your favorite egg, and uh, Carrie, just hold up your the, what you got. I'll just hold up my my first one's my favorite. Carrot. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We are back here every Thursday night, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We're so thankful that you took some time out of your busy evenings to join us here. Um, or if you're watching us on a playback, we hope you enjoyed this video. We hope you learned something or that you just made some time uh, for your crafty inner child. Um, we'll be back here next Thursday. Ooh, hopefully not too hungover because I think next week is uh, St. Patty's Day on Wednesday. So <laughs> we'll, we'll be here on Thursday diving into another Easter themed craft. We hope that you join us and thank you so much for joining us this evening. Have a wonderful week and we'll see you next time. Bye guys. Bye. Bye.